Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Claudia. I make lifestyle, productivity, and bullet journaling videos. Thank you so much for being here. It is very nice to meet you and welcome to my very first Q&A. Exciting! So thank you so much for 25,000 subscribers. In honor of hitting this milestone, I have a Q&A for you. So I have structured this video in five categories slash topics. You can find the timestamps down on the play bar as well as in the description box if you want to jump around, but this is the order I will be going in. First, I will be answering personal questions, then acting, then YouTube and social media, then bullet journaling, and last but not least, productivity and life advice. Without further ado, let's begin this Q&A. First one is, how are you? How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you very much for asking and I hope you're doing well too. How old are you? I just turned 23 actually. My birthday is on August 25th. Where are you from? I am from Vancouver, Canada, but I've lived in Hong Kong for seven years. What is your zodiac sign? Are you a Virgo? Yes, I am a Virgo and I am very proud to be one. What did you study while you were in school? So at UBC, University of British Columbia, the classes I took were English literature, philosophy, psychology, sociology, religion, and history. What is your favorite food? And also what kind of music do you like? Well, for favorite food, I love sushi. So if you ever take me out to all you can eat, know that I will definitely say yes. And I also love cheesecake, even though I'm lactose intolerant. For some reason, my body can ha actually handle cheesecake, so that's a win for me. And music, well, currently I've been listening to a lot of anime music. So we're talking anime OPs, EDs, OSTs, all of it, I love it. What's your favorite month? Um, I don't think I really have one. I guess I could say my birth month. What is your favorite city, favorite places slash countries you visited? I'd say Hong Kong, Paris, because I went to Paris for a school trip and that was a magical experience. I love the south of France, just Nice, France is gorgeous. And I also really loved Chiang Mai, which is in Northern Thailand. What countries do you want to visit? Where do you want to travel once the pandemic ends? Well, I am currently saving up for and planning to travel, not right away, but like far in the future because right now my priority is working, but I am planning to do a two month trip to Hong Kong, Japan, and South Korea. Will you move out? Well, eventually, um, I can't afford it right now. Rent prices in Vancouver are skyrocket high. What inspires you in life and what inspires you to keep going? Nature, just seeing a beautiful sunset, seeing the view after a hike, being at the beach, looking at the stars, that is very inspiring for me. My future self and the possibilities I could entail and the opportunities that are ahead of me that I've yet to experience and realize, that is very inspiring. What is your biggest achievement in life? Uh, I feel like I'm supposed to say something like I got a full ride academic scholarship for university, but that's like a flex. Something that's truly a valuable achievement in my life would be just getting to where I am right now in my life, being the person I am and marching to the beat of my own drum and feeling like I am currently the most truest version of myself right now is the biggest achievement. Book, film, series, song recommendations. Okay, so let's break this one down. Firstly, let's talk about book and reading recommendations. I recently read The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. That was really good. I also read Oyasumi Punpun, which is Goodnight Punpun by Asano Inio. That's a manga. Fair warning, it is quite depressing, but I like loved it so much with all my heart. Who is your favorite author and why? I guess an author I've always loved is Haruki Murakami. And why? Well, because he writes the way that I would love to write. His writing is dreamlike, surreal, liminal, transient. His stories make you feel unsettled and disoriented, but I love it. And that's why I crave reading his work. And he's the kind of writer I wish I could be. Also, do you have any tips on how to boost productivity when it comes to reading long novels like 1Q84? Usually when it comes to making progress on reading a long story, I highly recommend that you swap the time that you use for scrolling on social media with reading. So when you wake up in the morning, read a chapter. And before you go to sleep, read a chapter and just slowly go at it bit by bit every single day and eventually you'll get through the book. It's just about being diligent and keeping up the habit. Film recommendations. I recently watched 12 Angry Men. That was an astounding film. 
I also watched The 400 Blows, which is uh, Les 400 Coups. But putting aside black and white films, a film that I will love forever will be A Silent Voice directed by Naoko Yamada. Series recommendations. I highly recommend that you watch Fleabag, especially season two. It is just terrific. I love normal people as well. Song recommendations. On the note of anime music, I have recently been listening to a lot of Kaguya-sama Love is War soundtrack music. It is phenomenal. It's hilarious how it's a romantic comedy, yet the OST is like a battle shonen OST. It's, it's so funny, but it's very dramatic. It's gorgeous and it really gets me in the zone when it comes to working. Would love to know your first favorite animes. First anime that I ever like watched and really fell in love with would be Cardcaptor Sakura. And favorite anime, well, okay. So from the top of my head, we've got Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Fade Zero, Monster, Attack on Titan, Steins Gate, Ballad Evergarden, Mob Psycho 100. I swear whenever someone asks me this question, I end up forgetting all the anime I really enjoy. So I will just put some more recommendations right here. I need recommendations on anime, I'm just starting. Well, 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 welcome to the wondrous world of anime. So just to give you a few easy recommendations, just to ease you into it all, uh, these shows are like the least like anime kind of anime, just so you have a better transition into it. Um, Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Hunter Hunter, Mob Psycho 100 is great as well. Which anime are you watching right now? I recently finished watching uh, Dororo and that was really good. It's like a historical, supernatural, shonen action adventure kind of anime. And it's about this half demon child who grows up and kills demons in order to get his human body back. Favorite cloud card. So the cloud cards are these cards in Cardcaptor Sakura for those who don't know. Uh, I don't have a favorite one. I love them all equally. I mean, they're all so important and that's why Card Capture Sakura has to capture them all. Um, but yeah, I love them all. If you have a chance, what would you say to your younger self? Oh my God, so much. There's so much to say. I feel like I have to make a whole separate video for this one. I wouldn't even know where to start, but I think firstly, I would hug her for a very long time and let her know that she's loved. She shouldn't listen to other people's opinions and that she should value herself at a high regard because she deserves that. And Claudia, you're not missing out on anything. You don't have to go to that party. You don't have to make that boy like you back. Uh, anything that's for you should not be forced at all. So yeah, there's a lot for me to say. When did you start being a minimalist? I don't think I've ever been one, but I don't impulse buy. I don't binge buy. I don't hoard. I don't like collecting things. Favorite morning beverage and favorite evening beverage. Morning beverage would be black coffee. Evening beverage, I don't really have one, but I guess I like drinking orange juice. What's in your daily bag? Um, wallet, phone, keys, hand sanitizer, extra mask, tissues, water bottle, book, lip balm, and a pen sometimes, yeah. What is one habit of yours that's kind of strange? I don't know if it's strange, it's definitely impolite, but when I'm eating or if I'm sitting at my desk, I like to put my foot up like this. <laughs> I don't know if you do it, is it an Asian thing? Is it just a thing? I don't know, I just like, eating like this. I know it's bad manners and I like sitting like this. It's always the right foot. It's never the left, it's always the right. And for my brother, it's always his left leg. It's hilarious. So if we're sitting side by side, it's just us two like this hunched over. Bad posture, bad table manners. I don't recommend you doing it, but that's one strange habit of mine. Favorite actors and actresses? Well, let me just name a few for actors and actresses living and passed on. Henry Fonda in The Grapes of Wrath and 12 Angry Men. Tony Leung in Lust Caution and In the Mood for Love. Andrew Garfield in Silence. And for actresses, Frances McDormand in Fargo and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Kim Terry in The Handmaiden. Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind. So how did you become an actor? Maybe you could tell us more about your career background, like how you got into acting and all of that. I've always known that I've wanted to be an actor ever since I was a kid. There were four or five things that I knew from the get-go as a kid that I wanted to be. Being an actor, a writer, director, a mother and a teacher of some sort. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish in life. I've always known that I wanted to be an actor, but ever since going through my first audition and then being on set for my first commercial at 15 years old, I think, I just knew it was for me. Just being on set with a the camera there, I totally felt 
in the zone, like I was in my element. And since then I did a bit of drama in my last two years of high school. And it was only until mid 2019 when I got my current agent that I really wanted to commit to acting and pursue it at full throttle. And here I am. What was your motivation for becoming an actress? My motivation with acting is the possibilities of playing so many different characters and telling all these different stories. And I have the rest of my life to do that. And if there's a character or a story that's not written for me yet, I will write it. And that's what keeps me going. How has acting changed your life? It has totally changed my life and what I value and my work ethic and everything because I'm pouring my heart and soul into this. And I've become the person that I've become because of acting and because of the opportunities and the rejections and the detours I've gotten through with acting. And it's made me so much more aware of the human experience. It's made me so much more introspective about what it is to be human, what it is to have human connection, what it is to tell stories and the effects that stories have on others. Yeah. What made you start YouTube? Well, I've always wanted to do YouTube ever since I was a kid, when I was in middle school. I've always wanted to share my experiences and interests online, and I've always wanted to form a community of like-minded people. When will the next vlog be live? Uh, I haven't filmed a vlog in a long time. My apologies. I've just been at home not doing much, just working away, so it's not great content for you, to be honest. Uh, but I usually post Wednesdays and or Sundays. Why do you choose to keep your Instagram posts bullet journal free? Is it for aesthetics, job search, branding, etc.? Uh, well, I don't really have a good reason. I just have never had the interest in making a bullet journal Instagram. It's not something I've ever like thought about or cared for. I actually don't even use Instagram that often. Which is your favorite, most preferred social media site? I guess YouTube, because it's my job and I love watching videos and I love listening to music on YouTube. What's your favorite YouTube channel? I love video analysis, video essay kind of YouTube channels, especially film ones. So I love Every Frame of Painting, The Nerd Writer, and Behind the Curtain. How do you balance YouTube with your life and acting career? It's a struggle. It really is a struggle because with acting, it's so unpredictable. I'll get an audition all of a sudden and then within 24 to 72 hours, if I'm lucky, I have to memorize my lines, you know, create a compelling performance, tape it, record it, and send it off to my agent. And that means I usually have to put my YouTube stuff on the back burner, switch gears and go into acting mode. So that can cause some bumps here and there in my schedule and consistency. But I try my best and I try to batch create content when I can. I try to script things beforehand. Um, it's about being organized and knowing exactly what you need to do every day. Tips on starting YouTube. I feel like starting YouTube, I have no confidence to show my face. How do you do it? Practice. I would highly recommend that you film YouTube videos of yourself and you can post it onto YouTube or you can have it privated and just watch them over to see how comfortable you are on camera. It's really important to engage and to be engaging. And that just takes practice and also prepare. So let's say you're making a video about a certain topic, write out in bullet point form or in a script of what you want to say so you can stay on track and so you don't ramble. How did you get to 25K subs? Like how did you make your channel grow? Channel growth tips. Okay, so clarity, consistency, and being open to exploring and trying new things. Clarity meaning make sure your video ideas are clear and concise and you get straight to the point. Don't waste people's time. Consistency is uploading consistently, you know, every single week, whether it's once a week or twice a week, choose certain days and show up because you need to give a reason for people to come back and to watch your content. And be open to trying new things. Try a certain way of filming, try different types of content, try trending video ideas and whatnot, and just have fun with it because at the end of the day, you gotta have fun, you gotta enjoy what you're making. Who got you first into bullet journaling? Nobody really, I just wanted to bullet journal and I just searched up YouTube videos and that was it. When did you start bullet journaling? What inspired you to start bullet journaling? I started bullet journaling maybe in 2015, 2016. And what inspired me? Well, I've always wanted to find a really flexible kind of journaling and planning system that I could have full creative and technical control. And I found the bullet journal system and that was it. What is your main reason for journaling? It is for um, maximizing productivity, organization, and mindfulness. Why did you start a bullet journal channel? 
by accident actually. I never intended to make bullet journal videos at all. I just didn't have any huge interest in making a journaling channel. I've always journaled, it's always been a part of my life and that was something I didn't know that I had value to bring onto this channel but ever since I made my how to start a bullet journal video, I realized the feedback was great and that more people wanted to know more about journaling. And since then I've been creating more and more videos and people seem to like it, so yeah. How do you stay dedicated to bullet journal? I'm the sort of person who just forgets about things like diaries after a couple of weeks. So do you have any advice? And in that regard, how do you stay motivated to bullet journal slash make it a priority? I think when it comes to keeping up with bullet journaling or keeping up with any kind of habit, you have to have a strong reason why you're doing it in the first place. So what is your why? If your why is strong enough, you will keep up with it. And so for me, I can keep up with my bullet journal because I use it daily and it's a tool, an essential tool for me to stay productive and organized. How do you stay dedicated to one planning style when there are so many possibilities out there? Well, to be blunt, um, I just don't care. <laughs> I have no interest in learning other styles because what I've got going on right now works for me completely and I'm loving it. Have you tried other organization methods besides the bullet journal? Yes. Uh, like planners and agendas? Yes. In case you did, why the bullet journal was the best for you? Just because other methods did not work for me. And also with the bullet journal system, I have full creative and technical control, so I can mold my spreads to how I see fit depending on what I need out of the bullet journal system. And that's why I'm still using it to this day. Why do you like minimal journal spreads more than artsy spreads? Because I suck at art. <laughs> Uh, and also I don't care for artsy spreads. It's not something that brings me any value in my life. It's not the reason why I use my bullet journal and I'm lazy. I just don't have time, nor do I wanna put in the effort in making my spreads pretty. How has bullet journaling helped you? Oh, in so many ways. It's boosted my productivity. It's boosted my time management. It's helped to keep me clear and level-handed in things. It's helped me stay organized and so much more. If you were to make your bullet journal time capsule, which will only contain five of your favorite bullet journal materials slash supplies, what would the time capsule contain? My notebook, pen, zebra mile liner marker, stamps, ruler, or whiteout. Maybe whiteout because I make a lot of mistakes. What's your favorite bullet journal? Well, bullet journal brand, I don't really have a favorite because I've just been using the same one. I should explore different brands though but my favorite bullet journal kind of system would be the system I have right now because it is the most up-to-date way of journaling for me and it best aligns to what I need out of the system. Would you do more laid back setups for journaling? Of course, if that's what you want, I shall deliver. If you could convince people to drop out one single bad habit to improve their lives, what would it be? I would definitely ask everyone to stop eating junk food, stop eating processed food, stop eating fast food. If you cut out all of that stuff, if you actually ate real food, I promise you, your skin's going to clear up a bit. You're going to have a better mood. You're going to have better physical and mental health, seriously, because what you ingest, whether it's information, content, or sustenance, it plays a huge part on your mental and physical well-being. What is the most dangerous negative behavior among our daily routines that comes unnoticed? Scrolling on social media, being glued to your phone, etc. How do you stay motivated? I'd say that motivation comes and goes, so don't rely on motivation to get your work done. Rely on responsibility, accountability, and being disciplined. And I think also understanding your purpose in doing something and why you are doing what you're doing is really important because on the days when it gets tough, remind yourself of your purpose, of your reasons why, and that should fuel you forward. What is the one habit that makes your life much more productive? Making a smart to-do list and sticking to it. How do you not feel bad about yourself if you are not able to complete all your tasks for a particular day? And how do you prevent burnout and share about your favorite things? And in that similar note, how do you not feel bad after having not completed your tasks? Let's break this one down. How do I not feel bad about not completing stuff? The thing is, I do feel bad. I will be honest, I chastise myself, I feel guilty, I hate it when I can't complete my to-do list. I do, I will admit that, I'm not perfect. Um, some days I'll be really mean to myself, but then on some days I have to recognize that I have to surrender to the fact that the day has ended or the day has not gone the way I wanted. Maybe I was already not feeling well or maybe my expectations were too high. There are so many factors into this. And you just have to accept the fact that time has passed. What's done is done. So don't fret over the past. Don't chastise yourself. Don't worry over it because 
that time has gone. What you've got now is the present and you should make the most of it. Recognize what you do and what you not do when you're feeling stressed and anxious and when you're on the verge of a meltdown or a burnout. Schedule in breaks, schedule in rewards for yourself so you don't work yourself over the edge. And share your favorite things. Um, from the top of my head, uh, these earrings, I love them. These are from Yes Style. This necklace is from a local brand called Pachula. And I love this top. I bought it for myself as a little birthday gift. And this is from H&M. How do you manage to make a half-wasted day a productive day? Brain dump everything that you need to get done. Absolutely everything. Just externalize it, get it out of your body, out of your system, just get it onto page. Look at it and then make a to-do list from there. And your to-do list has to be realistic. It has to fit within expectation. Don't be too ambitious. Figure out how much time do you have left for the day, how much energy you have left for the day, and make a to-do list accordingly. How do you deal with pressures from society, family, and friends to pursue a safer or normal job? I have a lot to say for this one, but just to keep it short and sweet, I think Know your why. Why is it that you want to pursue this path, this job, this career, this interest of yours? Why? Know your reason why. Be strong in your conviction because as you are going down this path, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be questioned. You're going to be ridiculed. And don't expect other people that you expect to cheer you on to support you. It sounds harsh, but not everybody has the luxury of being surrounded by family and friends and peers and acquaintances that actually wholeheartedly support you and your dream. So you gotta be your best cheerleader, you gotta get your head in the game, and you gotta work hard and stay determined and stay patient and let the results speak for themselves. How can you keep confident with your dream? I mean, there's a lot of things that sometimes makes us, you know, feel tired, lonely, and anxious. How can you stay positive all the way? Truth is, you can't stay positive all the way. Like life itself, there are many ebbs and flows, peaks and valleys. You're gonna have really tough days, days you're gonna wanna give up, days where you're gonna have mental breakdowns and whatnot. I think in order to keep confident with your dream, this one kind of ties to the previous question. Remind yourself of your purpose, of the reasons why you want to embark on this hard path and celebrate the wins, the small wins especially. Just be grateful because gratitude is the attitude, okay? Also surround yourself with positive, supportive energy. So whether that be listening to a podcast, listening to music, reading a book, watching movies, watching content, or surrounding yourself with a good support system of family and friends and confidants, you need to fuel yourself with that good energy so you stay on course. How do you manage work without leaving behind your personal goals or self-improvement goals? I feel overloaded with homework and haven't worked on my personal goals and habits, so I feel unmotivated. So the secret to success in that is hidden in your daily routine. Look at what you do day to day. You don't have to have hours upon hours to work on your self-improvement goals. I'd say take that time instead of mindlessly scrolling on your phone to listen to a podcast or to meditate or to read something that you actually wanna read. I don't know what your goal is, but I think in order for things to change in your life, you have to implement small habits every single day because really the secret to success and the secret to changing your life is in your daily routine. What's one piece of advice you live by or try to incorporate into your daily life? I have two quotes that come to mind. First one is, this too shall pass. And the second one is by Winston Churchill, and he said, if you're going through hell, keep going. That one sounds kind of dramatic, but the sentiment is that whatever you're going through in life, good or bad, disregard the labels, it will pass. It will change, it will evolve, it will take different shape, it will mold into something else. And you have to know that life is temporary. Everything is transient and fleeting and passing. And you gotta stay light on your feet. You gotta take yourself not too seriously. You gotta laugh at yourself when you can. And if you're living life like that, knowing that pain, beauty, heartache, wonder, laughter, happiness, whatever it is, that those things will mold and change and leave, but you still choose to see the beauty in that and you still choose to cherish it and, and experience it wholeheartedly, then I think you're living life pretty well. So that's how I try to live. How do you balance your personal life with your academic life? So in school, I was already using the bullet journal and I was really clear with my boundaries. Say no to things if you have to say no. Really ask yourself and listen to your inner voice whether or not you wanna do something. So draw out clear boundaries and stick to them. Make a schedule, 
plan everything, organize it so you understand what you gotta get done. How do you manage to stay productive? In order for me to stay productive really, I just have to be clear with what I need to get done. So I brain dump, make a to-do list, and then I figure out a schedule that works for my day given my energy levels and given what I already have to get done anyway. And then I just do it. And it's just about being accountable for your word and your actions and being responsible. So yeah, that's how I stay productive. Make a damn schedule, plan your life out, work hard, stay determined, but reward and treat yourself. How do you get rid of social media addiction? Oh gosh, this is a big question. The first thing you can do is turn off notifications on your phone, on your electronic device, on your laptop, on your iPad, whatever it is. You don't need to be notified that so-and-so liked your picture on Instagram. You don't need to be notified that someone sent you a Snapchat. It doesn't matter. Sorry, is that harsh? I'm so sorry, that might be really harsh, but turn off the notifications on your electronic devices. You don't really need it. How do you fix yourself again when you get into hard depression? Whew, this is a heavy one to end this Q&A on, but um, I have definitely had times in my life where I was really down in the dumps to say the least, I was really sad, I was depressed. Firstly, talk to someone if you can, whether it's a family member, a friend, a close confidant, or a professional you can vent to and unleash your feelings. You need to get it out. I think that so often we chastise ourselves or we guilt trip ourselves or we get frustrated and mad and angry and sad at ourselves for being sad, for feeling how we're feeling, for not being on all the time, for not keeping up all the time. I just want you to honor that, hey, I'm not feeling great. I'm feeling really crap right now. And honor that, feel it through. Surround yourself in comforting things, things that remind you of how great it is to be alive, things that make you feel warm and fuzzy and happy and comfortable. Also go outside and get some vitamin D because I'm not a healthcare professional, but definitely as a society, our vitamin D levels are low because we stay indoors. So either get vitamin D naturally from the sun or take your vitamin D supplements, whatever works for you. Uh, know that vitamin D is a mood booster and you need the sun. We need to be outside we need to be getting fresh air. Move your body if you need to, if that's what it, it takes to get out of this stagnant energy. And also find a way of self-expression, whether that is journaling or it's propping up a camera and just talking to the camera just to get stuff out. Whatever it is that you do to express yourself, you gotta do it. And yeah, my apologies if I didn't really answer your question too well. Well, this is all unscripted, so I'm just coming up with whatever that's popping into my head. But know that you are loved, you are supported, and whatever you're going through, even if it's really tough and you think that nobody understands your pain and your suffering, know that you're not alone. And also know that I will try to be there for you as much as I can in any way that I can. So, yeah. All right, that is it. That is the end of my Q&A, my very first Q&A. Thank you so much for submitting these questions. I had a ton of fun answering them. As always, if you have any more questions or you need more clarity in my answers, let me know in the comments down below. I will get to them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.